Cool. Uh, let's get started. I'm extremely sorry for this delay. Uh, the funny part is like this uh, uh, this whole uh, presentation is about managing Windows application and unfortunately go to meeting don't support Linux desktop. So I had to rush up the 11th hour and get my Windows laptop uh, in place and then get started with this show. I'm really sorry for the inconvenience. Okay, let's get started. Uh, how can I hide this panel? Uh, hide control panel. Ah, cool. Okay. So yeah, welcome to this webinar. Uh, this webinar is designed for everyone who is already familiar with Puppet and is designed basically to manage Windows applications with Puppet. Uh, there's a slight difference between managing Linux and managing Windows with Puppet. So what is that difference? This webinar is all about that. How we can automate uh, Windows applications or uh, configurations uh, and all that stuff. Uh, so let's get started uh, with the introduction. Who am I? Uh, my name is Kaustup Saudari. I'm working as a DevOps consultant and puppet trainer for all the data. Uh, we are basically uh, only authorized training partner in Asia Pacific for uh, Puppet Labs. So uh, all the trainings that happen in India or in anywhere in Asia Pacific happens to us. Um, and we actually believe in uh, sharing the knowledge. So that's why we have this uh, series of webinars. So keep on sharing knowledge. Okay. Let's get started with the overview of what we are going to do with this uh, whole webinar today. So we'll first understand what exactly Puppet is, some, some basics of Puppet architecture, and then understand the Windows application management, uh, some Puppet code with Windows, and Puppet Forge, again related to Windows, and then we'll go to the questions. Uh, if you have any questions in the middle of seminar or uh, the webinar, Please raise your hand, uh, share your questions, uh, because I, I would prefer to have this as more of, more of a conversation rather than just I'm speaking and everyone is listening. So please feel to uh, ask your questions or interrupt me whenever required, okay? So here is, what is Puppet? Uh, Puppet is just a simple configuration management tool. Uh, what exactly it means by that? Uh, is this an orchestration tool? No. Uh, is this a compliance tool? Yes, it is a compliance tool. Because what we say with compliance is my configuration of a system uh, is set to ABC as per my standard and is supposed to be ABC till the system gets decommissioned. Yes, that is called as compliance. Uh, how do we maintain this compliance using configuration management? So yes, it is a configuration management application and also a compliance tool. Actually, this helps a lot when people go for the audits. Uh, I've seen in practice uh, that there are so many uh, types of audits for IT infrastructures, uh, uh, and especially if you are into a financial domain, yeah, they have to go through way too uh, strict audits, uh, and Puppet helps a lot with that. You say something, my configuration is supposed to be this on my server. Whenever the auditor comes and he sees the configuration, always stays like that. It's never like there is no discrepancy, one system showing XYZ, one system showing PQRS kind of configuration. So yes, that helps a lot. Uh, it's, it, it can scale, you know, uh, it can scale to a decent amount of uh, manage, uh, manage nodes. In, in fact, in Puppet nodes and uh, managed servers or the systems is also called as, or, or, or the agents, is also called as the managed server. It's the same uh, language that we use. It's, but, but basically, it's the agent uh, that we're talking about over here. So that means we can manage huge amount of agents. What, what kind of platforms do we support? Yeah, almost all uh, that are practically used in today's infrastructure. Uh, yeah, so we support all the types of uh, operating systems that you practically may come across in production. Uh, commercial versus 
uh, open source. Yeah, so there are two variants of Puppet. One is an open source, one is the commercial. Puppet Enterprise is something which comes with the support and open source is something which uh, of course you are on your own. Uh, you design it um, and you configure it and you maintain it. Uh, if in case of any problems with open source, you are on your own or with the help of community, you got to solve it. But uh, with the commercial support, uh, things are pretty easy to blame on something, you know, someone, if something is not working, so that works with the commercial support. Uh, I don't really like that in enterprise uh, infrastructure. Uh, okay, anyways, uh, coming back to infrastructure as a code, uh, we'll see how, how Puppet is uh, infra uh, treated as infrastructure as a code. I will talk about it. Uh, any any questions till now, or uh, should I move ahead? Okay, I'll take it as yay. Okay, I have someone raising his hand. Oh, Ravi Shankar, you have any questions? Can you type your questions? Oh, uh, okay. I don't see uh, anything coming up, so I will just uh, I'll just go ahead and get started again. Okay, let's move to the next slide. What? Uh, let's talk about Puppet architecture. How Puppet is and how Puppet agent communicates to each other. So there is a Puppet master and there are Puppet agents, and how they talk to each other is like. Uh, puppet agent goes and talk to the pastor, uh, get the configuration and come back. So this is a very kind of brief overview. Uh, we'll just go to the next slide which is slightly more in depth. There we go. How exactly Puppet works. Puppet is basically a full method. So every agent talks to the master. You are not pushing anything from the master or the master console to your managed infrastructure. Your managed infrastructure is coming and talking to you. Consider it's like you're the king and everyone comes and talks to you. You don't go and ask him. Uh, they just come and report up to you. That's it. So uh, it's always a pull method. Uh, puppet agent run is executed after every 30 minutes. Of course, this time is uh, you can modify this time. Uh, puppet agent comes and talks to the master, checks for whatever configurations are available for uh, for the for that node. Uh, goes back, uh, applies the configuration, the catalog, and then sends the reports. That's how it is. So it starts basically from the node. First is the facts. It sends some factual data uh, to the puppet master. Puppet master sends the catalog back to the node. Node does the enforcing job. Comes uh, sends the report to the puppet master and Puppet Master displays the reports using some report collector or through the dashboard itself if you're using an enterprise version. That's a quick thing, but the most important about uh, this is to understand that this is a pull method and not a push method. Okay, I'll go ahead to the next slide. So what is the difference with Windows uh, related to Puppet? Um, a way of execution? No, uh, the way of execution is same for Linux and for Windows. Um, is there any architectural difference? Is there any difference in the way Puppet Agent runs, Puppet Agent sends the data or applies the catalog? No, they still the same thing. Then what's the difference? The way you write the code. Windows is not Linux and Linux is not Windows. So there are some differences. And let's accept the path. Uh, in most of the infrastructure, we still have 50 to 60 percent of Windows uh, servers. So you have to manage uh, Windows systems using Puppet. So how do we do that? What is the difference? That uh, this webinar is all about that. Any questions till now? If you have, please raise your hand, or just go ahead and type it in the chat. Cool. I will get going. So Windows code. On the right hand side you see a class which talks about file, C colon Windows, automation, and show directory. 
everyone knows that this is a directory we are trying to create a directory uh, before creating a file uh, which is again a directory so I'm creating a directory inside a directory right so I'm ensuring that the first directory is created and then the second directory is created but what is the difference you know do you find something weird in here the most important part is if you see how windows writes C backslash windows but in here it's forward slash this is very important so which one is correct this webinar is all about that understanding how to write a code for windows and when to use backslash when to use forward slash this is very critical uh, with windows things uh, let's take one step ahead some more code uh, one second uh, code as an infrastructure so what we are trying to do here is I'm trying to create a directory on the slide uh, which is basically Windows automation and then another directory called as Windows uh, automation puppet so I'm trying to create some infrastructure related configurations on my server I am defining what kind of configuration should be on my server it's just directory creation I can manage services I can manage files I can manage directories I can manage oh, what not a lot many things we'll see eventually but this is called as infrastructure as a code we type our infrastructure in a coding format and enforce it in our the whole infrastructure using puppet some more code let's talk about this uh, here is an exact uh, resource that I'm using. Uh, I guess everyone knows exec, but uh, I'm going to talk a, a bit about it. Exec, uh, SCP status dot bat. Okay, um, SCP is like semantic enterprise uh, application. So I'm just giving it as a name as an SCP status dot bat. It's a simple Windows bat script, and this is how I'm running the command. Now, if you see what is the difference here. I'm running command C colon slash slash windows slash slash system 32 slash slash cmd dot exe I'm changing to that directory and then executing SCP status dot bat but now here I'm using backslash but in this previous slide I'm using forward slash please note the differences we'll talk about it in a while so what exactly is this doing? I'm running a simple batch script uh, into a directory. I'm sitting into a directory and then running a batch script, which is simple. Uh, SCP status dot bat. Uh, it's pretty good. It runs as expected. Uh, everything is cool and nice. But exec is one of the most dangerous state uh, resource type that you will be using. The basic concept of Puppet is that it is idempotent. You don't have to worry if the code is running over and over and over on your system. If the uh, uh, what we say, if I run a command over and over, I don't know what will be the output of it. It may just run with no errors. It may give errors or it may keep on updating the application depends on my script. Or my command with puppet it's not like that it's always item potent so you run one command on one time and if that is already in place for example let's take an example for a user if you're trying to manage user using puppet if that user exists puppet is not going to do anything if the user is not present on your system it will just go ahead and create the user so but once the user is created every time puppet agent runs it is not going to go ahead and modify that user that means what puppet is item potent it will do the configuration once and it will run over and over without affecting your infrastructure with exec is the exact opposite of that exec does execute whatever you ask it to and over and over and over which is very dangerous I don't know what is in the uh, SCP status dot bat, but with the name says that okay, it's just the status file. It maybe it's like just grabbing something, some service status, and something, and then displaying in a file. But every time puppet agent run, this first statement 
is going to run over and over and keep on updating that specific file if you're writing it to or throwing the message to your event log whatever is the script is doing is going to keep on doing over and over which is very dangerous that means what you have to take care of item potency with uh, with exec if you are using exec you got to make sure that it runs only once and not again and again that is very important so that's why I have a second example and here I am running uh, configure network settings dot bat and it says only if this file exists if this file exists do nothing if it's uh, if it's uh, not there just go ahead and create the file and then run it so what happens is like I'm creating a check if the file exists don't run if the file don't exist go ahead and run it so I'm creating a kind of item potency this is very important with exec unfortunately with windows you have to use exec in a lot many places and that's why it is very 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 important to understand how to make it item potent if you don't do it you will be messing up with your infrastructure are we good till now any questions with exec I don't see any hands I don't see any questions if you have any questions please type it in the chat don't worry about it okay I'll go ahead and move to the next slide some more code so what we are doing here is talking about a package resource I wish to install something uh, the way I do it in, in Linux I say package ensure install on Linux let's say SSH install yeah I can do it pretty easily but with Windows how do I do it well the method is still the same uh, the only difference is you have to provide the installation uh, installer with the with your code for example you create a file in this case I have a source which is C Windows Automation Puppet SCP SCP.exe that means I need to ensure that this exe file is already present on the system what kind of uh, files that I can execute as a pack with package resource I can use MSI I can use exe so but with exe and MSI you have to have uh, the file or the application uh, present on the server so you might have to create a uh, file resource which actually copies the actual .exe, SAP.exe to your system and then you uh, run this kind of code. What here I am doing is Symantec Endpoint Protection. Package Symantec Endpoint Protection, Ensure Installed. Name, Symantec Endpoint Protection, the same name. Uh, I am just using a name var but uh, practically the name is same so it makes no difference. Uh, source here I'm specifying a source from where this is supposed to be copied in this case I'm creating a I'm using a local file as a source an interesting thing install options slash s that means what it's it's like in the silent mode so of course puppet is going to run in the background and if you try to install an application which is in the graphical mode Oh, installer is going to basically time out because you, uh, with the graphical installation you actually need to use mouse and say click uh, next next yes yes or something like that and at the end you might have to say finish but that's not a good idea to do with uh, with the packages that you wish to manage using puppet how would you do it you use a silent installation either you use an answer file or something like that uh, the last line that I mentioned here is like if you can do it through command line you can do it through puppet but if you wish to use graphics uh, that's gonna be difficult so always go with the silent options that's what I recommend I also suggest using a self extracting packages uh, you can easily create a self extracting packages like MSI or something like that and then just uh, use them uh, which is pretty simple uh, to use but uh, if you already have an exe you can directly go ahead and use install options uh, with your with your configuration okay 
this was uh, more code. Let's uh, take one more step ahead and take uh, still more code. Now here I'm I'm going to display a full uh, resource of uh, a full file which is going to talk about the SCP installation. So the first line, and then we are going to talk about power slash and backslash eventually. Okay. First, if dollar semantic is equals to is equals to false. I'm just putting an if and uh, if and else statement here. Uh, dollar semantic is basically your custom variable, uh, custom pact in fact, uh, that I'm checking. If semantic says that custom pact says uh, it's false, then go inside the if loop and do whatever you, uh, whatever you we have mentioned in here. So first, I'm creating a file. Then again, I'm creating a file which is actual set uh, setup.exe. That means I'm actually copying the exe file to the remote server. Then I have a package resource that we just talked about, and then I have a service. So I first ensure the required installation file is present on the system. Second, I ensure the package is installed with the proper install options, and third, I I, I start the service. So I have added a few more things uh, to this code or we'll eventually see it in the next slide. So first we have the installation file, second we install that file, uh, sorry, the install that same package which is .exe and then start the service. Okay, still some more code. Uh, of course this is the continuation of the previous code. Uh, I am also having a SCP status .bat. Okay, what is this doing? This is basically running uh, a status.bat, which bat contains. Uh, it just basically uh, grabs the status of the service, if it is actually running or not, and then uh, put it to some file. So and this is just an example. Practically, the, you may not need it, but uh, just to give it an example, I have added it over here. Uh, and else, what if the dollar semantic uh, what if dollar semantic is equals to true? What happens? It goes to else, and else it makes sure the service is always running and is always enabled. So that's how I get my semantic installed on a Windows box. If it is not installed, if it is installed, it just makes sure that uh, semantic is always running without any problems. Any questions? Now, I got a silent group over here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. These are some important things that we need to remember. Okay, before we go there, uh, I, I was expecting someone to ask me about this, but no one unfortunately. Uh, if you see uh, in this thing, in, in the service resource, uh, I've explicitly mentioned it on the uh, right hand side, uh, sorry, left hand side, uh, SCP master service. So where do I get the service name? This is the actual service display name that you get on your Windows system. If you go to your services.msc, you know, you just start your services uh, console, uh, MMC, um, just right click. Uh, your any of the service and see the properties then there is a display name and then there is actual service name so this is the display name that we use same goes with the package uh, if you see there is a package resource there is a name called a semantic space endpoint space protection so this is the actual name that you see in your uh, add remove programs this is very important uh, uh, that you mention the correct package name uh, and the correct service name uh, with your code okay so there we are uh, some things to remember uh, I did learn this thing in a little harder way so thought of like putting it here uh, the most important is if you are running a win a puppet 32-bit application 32-bit binary on a 32-bit system everything is good if you are running a 64-bit binary on a 64-bit operating system, everything is good. 
you don't have to worry much about it. With version 3.7 and above, I guess you really don't have to worry about file system redirectors. But if you are running a 32-bit version of Puppet on a 64-bit version of operating system, then there is a problem. The file system basically redirects directly anything and everything to SysWow64 instead of System32. So a lot many applications fail if you are uh, dependent on System32 specific uh, binaries. Uh, this is very important to understand. Uh, same goes with the program file environment. Uh, C program files in 64-bit uh, and 32 bits are slightly different that needs to be uh, taken care of whenever you are writing code this is very very important because uh, if the file redirects are not as expected uh, you can get into a, a loop of uh, figuring out what's happening and you never find out because technically you are doing right uh, puppet is doing something silent like the back end so this is very important this is only if you are running a 32 bit uh, puppet agent on a 64-bit uh, operating system. Um, so again, as far as you are running the same architecture, everything is going to be fine. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, okay, now the backslash. So when to use and when not to use. Here is a simple example. See, colon, colon, program files, slash, slash, puppet labs. You always use double quotes with this kind of uh, backslashes when you're using. Now, in the next slide, we see when to use and when what kind of slashes would be applicable uh, at which kind of uh, level of code. Here is the difference. Forward slash. You can use forward slash, must use forward slash in template parts or in your puppet URL, something like that. Forward slash and backslash both are allowed in your path variable, uh, in your source packages. So in your uh, in your commands or something like that. Where do you must use a backslash? For example, uh, a perfect example is in front of us here. In this slide, I'm using forward slash in my file resource, uh, in my source. But when I'm actually executing anything on the system, my command, my exec command is actually going on to that directory and then executing that script from that directory. In that case, I have to go full path. And which would, this path is supposed to be absolutely correct because actually this script is getting executed on the server within that directory. But the above puppet code, puppet code is something different rather than just going into a directory and then executing a file. Puppet is just applying the code, uh, applying a compiled catalog. It's different. So you can use forward single slash, forward slash over there. But when you are doing anything directly on any directory or any specific file, you have to use backslash. And uh, again, where you can use both and where it is must. Um, schedule task, uh, install options. These are a few, few of the examples over uh, here that you can use it. OK. Uh, any questions till now? If not, then I can move to the next topic, which is more about Windows modules. You can raise your hand if you have any questions. All right, cool. I'll take it as no and move ahead. So Windows modules. Uh, what is this? Uh, uh, I guess everyone's familiar with the uh, with the Puppet Pose modules. We are just going to talk about Windows specific modules and how they can help us. Here is a simple example of your registry module. I have a registry module installed. I'm using resource type out of it. Uh, and another example is for the PowerShell. So with the first one, I'm just disabling UAC on my Windows 2012 system. I can go ahead and update my uh, every single registry value uh, with this. Uh, if I have this module installed, because this module is capable of going ahead and talking uh, to your registry directly. 
if you see registry value and then there is a whole key value over there this registry value this resource type is provided by a module which is called as windows registry module so you need to have that module installed so that you can use this uh, resource type directly and uh, use it as per your uh, infrastructure requirement uh, i'm just uh, setting up the d word value set to zero uh, the next example for PowerShell is like if you see the command uh, in in the PowerShell, it's the actual PowerShell command that we can run. Uh, it's an exec uh, resource we are using, so we are also using uh, unless, which is basically making it, it idempotent. And I'm using provider as PowerShell. So you just type whatever you write in your PowerShell script in your command, and just mention provider as PowerShell, and it will do whatever is required. These are the examples. These are like uh, pretty day-to-day -day things uh, which you might need. Windows registry module, your PowerShell module, your ISS module. These are like uh, already available uh, on Puppet Forge. All you need to just install it and use the resource type uh, as per your convenience. Okay, next. Uh, let's take a look at something more interesting. In this slide, uh, the previous slide, let me go there again. We talked about MSI supported types, MSI, exec, and chocolatey. Uh, many of uh, Windows admins have not heard about chocolatey, so let's quickly have a word on chocolatey now. Uh, where, where, ah, yeah, that's where I am. So the, there are two examples in this. Uh, what exactly chocolatey is? Chocolatey is just like yum for Linux. What you do with yum is like yum install some package name and it does the installation for you or if you're using a latest version of uh, Linux you might go use with DNF or maybe abrogate for Ubuntu or Debian kind of uh, system so it's like there's a repository somewhere uh, you configure that repository on your system and then just execute one command and does the installation for you you don't have to like download the package or dependencies with that and then install individually so yum makes your life easy same goes with chocolatey. Uh, chocolatey is like yum for Windows. Uh, it's, it's of course a third party tool. It's not like a Windows application uh, or Windows provided application, but it works pretty well. So you need to have a chocolatey repository, chocolatey configured on your system. And once that is there, uh, this is how your code can change. In the first example here, what I'm doing, I'm actually copying the file uh, locally in my c, uh, c colon temp directory git version and then giving install option as silent and ensure install and uh, whatnot. Uh, th this is what we have seen in the uh, semantic installation in the previous exam, a uh, few of the previous slides. Uh, with chocolatey, code is like just two lines. Look at that. Package, git, ensure, lettuce. That's it. It's going to install the git. It's going to download the git from the repository, install it and do it whatever the configuration is required to do. I mean, basically the installation, which is pretty cool. So those who are not familiar with uh, Chocolatey, you really want to Google about it now. Okay, that's, uh, that's pretty much I have for Windows module. Uh, there are some interesting modules. Uh, of course, you can check it on the Puppet Forge. And uh, the one which I generally recommend of using is a Puppet Lab Windows module. This Windows module is a group of multiple modules. So if you just go ahead and install, you'll get uh, multiple Puppet modules, which includes like registry and a few more things. You know, uh, if you just go ahead and check it on the forge.puppet.com uh, 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 and just, uh, just go to the forge and search for Windows, you'll see a huge number of uh, Windows modules. You can add more, you can use modules to uh, add a system to a domain, uh, a configure Active Directory and all, what not, what not, trust me. Uh, ISS, one of the most common examples. People use uh, ISS, uh, ISS module to do the ISS configuration and to maintain it. So um, that's, uh, that's pretty much uh, about it. Um, that's pretty much about my today's webinar. Um, it is a good time to ask questions. Please go ahead and shoot all your questions that you have. Uh, 
Uh, no questions. Okay. Okay, then I'm going once, twice, and three. So, thank you for attending the webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, my email ID is mentioned here. Feel free to contact me. Uh, if in case of any doubts, uh, I'm more than happy to help and assist. Uh, so, thank you. Thanks for your time and attending this webinar. Uh, have a pleasant day going ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye.